Hey everyone, thanks for joining us for Today in Media. I'm Jack Crow, political reporter with the Daily Caller News Foundation. I'm filling in for Sagar and Jetty today. I'm joined by my co-host, Amber Athey. Hey everybody. Caller. And we're going to be going uh, through a rundown of the five most ridiculous takes in media today. We'll be talking about Rand Paul's beating and its potential connection to Donald Trump, and a Twitter take that got Ben Shapiro into some trouble today. Uh, his opinion left a few people thinking he should be punched. So we'll start with uh, number five. A writer for The Intercept uh, said that ungrateful is, quote, the new N-word. He was talking about Donald Trump's uh, tweet calling the UCLA basketball players that he free or he played a role in getting out of Chinese jail ungrateful. Um, and apparently... Few people think that's racially motivated. What do we think, Amber? Well, this is Sean King, who is a well-known race baiter. I mean, if he can inject race into any political situation, he's going to do it. I think the funniest thing here is that um, I'm pretty sure like 80% of people think that Sean King is actually white. So him <laughs> using the N-word in this instance is actually pretty racist in itself, if that turns out to be true. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is a this is a pretty normal take uh, relative to what Trump has said in the past. You know, right. we're pretty used to him demanding credit publicly for things that he believes he's owed credit for. He's done it to white people. He's done it to black people. He does it to people of all political stripes. If he thinks he's helped you out, he wants you to publicly thank him. Um, so this is pretty much in keeping with what you've seen him do before. And uh, for this Intercept writer to just drop the N-word into this conversation seems pretty misplaced. Yeah, I mean, I think it's inappropriate in general to use that word, especially if you're supposed to be a professional person, which he has con contributorships with multiple places. Then again, he also has connections to Black Lives Matter, which hasn't been known for its um, respectful debate or conversation. <laughs> so can't say it's all that surprising. Right. I guess we shouldn't be shocked here. <laughs> uh, next, we'll move on to uh, Ben Shapiro. He got into a Twitter argument today. Uh, he was arguing with a leftist who tweeted, trans women are women. She tweeted it about 10 times in, in succession uh, in the one The more tweet. you repeat it, the more it's true. Right, of course. We know that. Uh, according to the left, that's definitely the case. <laughs> uh, so Shapiro tweeted back, nope, 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 uh, trying to refute her argument. And an editor at Reason Magazine, a libertarian uh, publication, normally you'd think libertarians want people to be free to express their views, tweeted back, uh, ben Shapiro should be punched repeatedly for saying that trans women are not women. Yeah, well, I think you pointed out perfectly the fact that people at Reason are usually pretty uh, willing to let people share their opinions. They've actually been some of the people writing the most um, positive op-eds about Ben Shapiro's time speaking on college campuses and speaking out against those college students who have tried to shut him down. So the fact that an editor there would, even if she was joking, say that people should punch Ben in the face is pretty ridiculous coming out of that magazine. Definitely. I mean, when you think about the context, you have Ben Shapiro, normally considered kind of a uh, free speech icon. Mm -hmm. um, he goes to places that are hostile to conservative views and speaks his mind. He's been threatened with violence a ton of times before. He was the number one target of anti-Semitic threats from the alt-right during the uh, 2016 election. And now we have an editor at a libertarian organization, a publication, um, saying he should be punched. So this is... Uh, this is weird territory we're in here. Weird and just irresponsible for Definitely. anyone to suggest that you should commit violence against someone, whether it's a joke or not. I honestly don't think it's funny, especially considering how much he's been threatened with real violence. For sure. For sure. Yeah, absolutely ridiculous. All right, moving on to number three. We had, CNN, we had Simone Sanders on CNN this morning uh, saying that Al Franken has integrity. Um, she pointed out that Franken has engaged with his out with the uh, allegations of sexual misconduct against him and apologized. And I guess, you know, for her, that's enough. Yeah, let's see what she said here. Watch. It's clear that um, what Senator Franken is accused of and has done is absolutely horrible. He needs to answer um, for uh, these these allegations and he has to be held accountable. But I, I want to be clear that I am not equating uh, Senator Al Franken to Roy Moore, who has been accused of, of, of pedophilia, because in my opinion, I think that's a whole nother level. It's it, it's a whole yeah. nother level of something that we have to to, to address and talk about. Simone, but I agree Al with Franken you. has integrity. So apparently if you do something really terrible to women and then apologize, it's all okay. Um, I think it's interesting that she claims that 
he uh, is, has integrity for apparently engaging with the allegations when his apologies were basically, well, I don't remember it, but, you know, I guess it could have happened. And if it did, then I'm sorry. Yeah. Or also, uh, I'm sorry if I caused the women discomfort, not I'm sorry for my actions. Right. I mean, these weak apologies don't deserve really any credit. And for her to say that he has integrity just shows how much of a political hack she is. But of course, she was on Bernie Sanders' campaign as a right. national um, press director. So Once again, I guess we shouldn't be surprised. Right. <laughs> All right, moving on to number two. Uh, so a writer for Bloomberg Business, uh, Josh Green, uh, said that Franken has engaged with his allegations, um, and Green seemed to think that this kind of cleared him of responsibility. He was comparing the allegations against Franken to the allegations against Mo Roy Moore and kind of how the two have dealt with it. Um, and he said, you know, Franken has really... Uh, leaned into these allegations and addressed them head on while Moore kind of has run away, pointing out that he only will appear on Fox News. Um, to me, trying to compare uh, these, two, uh, these two instances of sexual misconduct and try and figure out which is worse is, seems like a pretty unproductive uh, competition to get into. Yeah, it seems like it's trying to minimize the allegations against Al Franken. I think they should be um, sort of analyzed on their own merits or lack thereof. Right. And in order for our viewers to see just how silly this take is, um, please watch this video of Josh Green. There's a process of working through the facts in both these cases. I think that Senator Franken has come out and been very forthright about what he did. He's apologized. He seemed to engage with these charges, whereas Roy Moore uh, seems to have all but disappeared except from Fox mm -hmm. News and hidden behind uh, pastors, his wife, other people. He doesn't seem to want uh, to answer for these charges. I think that is part of the process that's got to happen but, yeah. between now and Election Day on December 12th. All right, all right Josh Green. Yeah, I completely agree that this is unproductive. Um, the only reason that you would seek to compare these two allegations is if you're trying to make one look less bad than the other. I think we should be able to say that whatever Roy Moore may have done is really bad, whatever... Al Franken did is really bad, maybe not as bad, obviously not as bad as pedophilia, but um, in order to compare them, you're basically minimizing what Franken did. And that being said, I don't really think he deserves credit for this sort of like half apology that he gave. Right. We should be, you know, saying, we should be judging Al Franken based on the actions that he took rather than how he responded to them. Right. I mean, it's pretty easy to give a pretty boilerplate PR response to allegations like these and, you know, say, say, I don't remember. Um, that way you don't have to actually admit any wrongdoing right. um, and uh, try to just ride out the storm. And, you know, that's exactly what Franken's doing. And, you know, to be expected, he's a politician. But I don't think people should be going on TV and celebrating him, uh, you know, as some type of icon just because he's not as bad as Roy Moore. Right. And we should note that the only allegation he's admitted to is the one where he was caught on camera. Right. He's only admitted to the fact that he groped Leanne Tweeden while she was asleep on the USO tour because there's a photograph of it. <laughs> I don't really think that we should be praising someone for admitting to something that's literally proven with a photograph. Right, I mean, right. congrats, I guess. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's literally a picture of this, you know, enough said on that. Yeah. <laughs> So moving on to number one, the top spot today, a piece published in the New Yorker connected Rand Paul's beating at the hands of his 59 year old uh, neighbor to President Donald Trump's uh, administration. This was really confusing, and you were I was no less confused after reading the article than I was when I read the headline. You know, it's not explained at all in the piece how Rand Paul's beating has anything to do with Trump. Well, this is basically what they were trying to do, I, I think, was they were trying to say that leftist violence is justified because there's some kind of culture created by Trump that makes it okay to attack people on the right. And this all started back when Trump was first running in 2016, where people said that his rhetoric might make people more violent. The original argument was that it was going to make people on the right more violent, and we were going to see this massive rise in hate crimes that didn't happen. In reality, what happened is that a lot of people on the left became very violent and began uh, this backlash against people on the right and conservatives, and even people who really don't have any affiliation to Donald Trump. So I think the case here is they're trying to excuse what this neighbor did by saying, well, it's all Trump's fault. 
Yeah, this seems to uh, have almost become its own genre in the media today, yep. taking an event that um, has no connection to Trump's presidency and tying it to this environment or this culture that his presidency has supposedly created. But apparently the dispute was over uh, some, some lawn trimmings that may have ended up in the neighbor's yard. Um, it wasn't a political dispute, um, according to uh, the authorities and to the neighbor who uh, committed the assault. Um, so to connect this to Trump's presidency just seems outrageous. Yeah, and the piece also talks about some speculative notion that Rand Paul had pumpkins or gourds in his yard that had become rotten by the heat, and so the smell was bothering his neighbor. Yeah. I mean, no sane person has a, a lawn dispute with their neighbor and decides to physically attack them. <laughs> that is just not the action that a reasonable individual takes when confronted with an, an adult situation. Right, right. I mean, listen, this piece was bad as an opinion essay, um, and it was also bad reporting. Yes. Uh, basically, there's speculation that Rand Paul, uh, the way that he conducts his gardening creates uh, <laughs> an unusual scent, and that was hard to deal with. Um, but it's not backed up by any quotes from anyone no one is cited. It's essentially this writer taking a guess, and uh, apparently this was good enough for the New Yorker. So Yeah, and they also leave out all of the statements from Rand Paul's office that this wasn't motivated by any kind of dispute over lawn trimmings. This was apparent. They say it was probably politically motivated, and a lot of the neighbors dispute the fact that these two even had any contact over the years. So this right. seems to be some kind of blindside attack from Rand Paul's neighbor, and not really anything to do with uh, pumpkins or Donald Trump, although both are apparently orange. Uh, <laughs> thank you all so much for watching today in media. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, comment, and share, and we hope you'll join us on the next episode.